So now that my lathe is fixed, I can go about doing what I was gonna do before it broke, and that is make a piece for my flex shaft grinder. This is actually not designed to be a flex shaft grinder, but I've got a flex shaft hook to it. I love it. I've got two of these, one that's more stationary and this one that's more portable. It's plenty strong, it's awesome, but I need to be able to use this with some other tooling that I got, and I'll, I'll show you in just a second. You can also buy what I'm about to make. Uh, but you can make what I'm about to make as well, and that's why I'm going to do it, because you can, and I find it interesting, or else I wouldn't make it. So let me share with you what I need to do, and we'll go about making this piece. So I really like this setup that I have here, a little power, Makita-powered uh, die grinder with, hooked to a Fordham 44B flexible shaft, so I can get in there, do my deburring and stuff. Now, the problem that I have is I can only use, at the moment, quarter-inch shanked burrs, because all I've got is a quarter-inch size call it and all of my quarter inch shank burrs are about this size so quite big and I've got a bunch of eighth inch call it's that I normally use in my air tools but I hate having to wait on the air compressor to load up and pull out an air hose and stuff when I can just plug this guy in and, and use it so I'm gonna make a eighth inch call it so I can use those burrs with this setup and yes you can buy these in eighth inch but you can also make them and I think it'll be a neat little project so that's what I'm gonna do let's measure these little baby angles and then uh, go over to the lathe get set up do our work there go to the mill and by the time we're done boom we'll have an eighth inch collet and be able to use these in the setup so in the past if i wanted to measure really short angles like what we have on this collet here it's tough to do uh, no matter who you are really unless you've got very specific tools to do that i would use a little protractor like this just set it on there you know do my best to line it up and see whatever this told me and then hope that I was right. Well, now that I've got this optical comparator that's on this RO grinder, radial relief grinder, I'm already set up here, I'll show you. It projects the profile of that collet. Hopefully you can see that. Got the back, short back angle, and then the long front angle right there. And all I've got to do is line it up on the screen there and move this outer ring to where it lines up with the shadow that's projected from the collet. And that is 25 degrees on that front angle. Now let's measure this little angle in the back here super quick. Line that up. Rotate our outer screen. And that, that's 30 degrees. So 25 degrees on the front, long angle, 30 degrees on the back, short angle. That's cooler than LL Cool J in the 90s. If you're measuring or if you need to grind a tool to a specific angle and you want to check that, man, it just don't get it just don't get any nicer than using an optical comparator to measure angles and stuff. It just works really well, especially when you need to magnify small things. So there you go. That's how I got my angles that we need to cut for this collet. So I'm going to be making a form tool to cut my angles, both the 25 and the 30 degree angle. This is a piece of Momax, uh, Super Momax Cobalt. This is the, the brand. I'm just going to use a little die on this side. Then I'll flip it over, put a little on the other side. We'll scribe our 25 and our 30 degree angle on it. Then I'll go to the cutter grinder. Just blast that on there real quick. And uh, then we can use this as like a form tool. And 25. So I'm all set up here to ground in my 25 degree angle. Got my multi-angle vise bolted to the table of the cutter grinder. You guys have seen me use this before. There's nothing really to it. Just gonna fire it up and grind it till I meet up with my line, flip it, do my 30 degree, and then my tool will be done.
All right, so I believe I'm all set up in the lathe here to start forming, forming this collet. This is a piece of 5 8 round 4140. We've got our form tool here, which if we square this tool up with the face of the jaw, or the face of the chuck, we should just be able to run this in on one, flip the tool, square it up, and then run in for the back. And we should get accurate angles on the front and the back of this collet. So we are going to turn down the stock to our major OD. Then I'm going to use some layout fluid and lay out where I need to stop and start with my with my tapers. We're going to drill. We're going to ring to 0.126, which is one thou over one eighth. So our tool slides in and out of the collet easy. And then we'll take this over to the mill and put our our slots in there or our reliefs with our slitting saw. So it looks like our major diameter, 0.432 inch or 1.1 mil basically. So we're going to burn this down to that, a small section of it anyway. And we'll go to the next step. harmonic or put a center in the end. So you can see we're stuck out of the chuck five times, six times the diameter of the work that we're trying to cut, and that's why we're getting harmonic. But I need that stick out in order to get my tools in there to do the work. So in order to combat our part getting harmonic, which it was doing, we sent a drill to end, put in a, a high access uh, live center, and that solved the problem. So anytime you can use a live center, it's just better, especially if you're doing uh, small diameter parts, you get less part push off, more even diameter uh, from uh, one end to the other as you turn, because as you can imagine, the farthest end sticking out from the chuck is less supported or less rigid than the end right near the jaws, and you end up having a part that more like a wedge instead of a instead of cylinder. So the use of a live center is a very good thing. A little more work to put one in, but you get better work because of it.
so 0.334 or 8.49 or 8.5 mil that's what we need to turn the small back section down to So I've made a little bit of a mistake here, at least on, in my opinion, I have. I should have started cutting this collet out of the stock that I have down here. That's what I should have done instead of down here. Uh, what I'm going to have to do, or what I'm going to do, is come in and part this collet off at right at the end of where it's going to where it's going to stop there, and then come back in and center drill this again. Shouldn't make any difference really, but had I to do over, I would have machined it from this end and that way I wouldn't have had to part anything off but other than the collet itself so there we go I think that's what I'm going to do is just part off right here towards the end of the collet come back in and center drill it and then drill this thing and ream it that's kind of the plan Of course, I wouldn't have had the tool hanging out far enough. My tool post is hitting the steady rest, or my center.
All right, so now we're drilling. This is a uh, 33 drill, which is 113 thousandths. That's gonna leave us 13 thousandths left behind for our 0.126 reamer. So if it, everything drills to size, that's, that's what'll happen. Pretty sure that is to depth. Now it's time to change out for a reamer. That is it. She is reamed. Now we need to pull that out of there, take it over to the mill. Looking good so far. So here's the game plan for the mill. We're already set up with this use of 5C indexer. It's set up right now for six divisions, so every other division is what we'll do because we have three even splits in our original collet that allow it to spring open and closed. Allow, when we tighten this thing down, it to squeeze on to the shaft of our, of our burr and hold it. So the .126 hole in there, just it's perfect just enough free room to where it should, the collet should relax to where you can move it in and out, but it's not loose enough to where when it's tightened down, it should have a lot of run out or anything. I think that will work just fine. So let's get this loaded up. We'll get our parting blade on center. It's like 52 thousandths wide is what I measured these splits. So we'll get set up here and hopefully get our slots in there. So how far we feed in with the saw is really not all that critical. But I'm gonna assume that the people who made this call it originally uh, you know, knew something that I don't know. So I'm just gonna repeat what they did. Okay, consider that a touch off. All right, so half the diameter of the work, which will be 218. One, two, 15, 16, 17, 18. And now half the thickness of the blade. So 20, 25 and a half. And there we go. We are right on center. Should be.
So if you notice, I'm using the small auxiliary handle on the front of this machine, and for a mill that's this big, the length of the table being so long, if you were out at the ends of the table working the, the, the feeds, you wouldn't be able to be close enough to the work to really see what's going on. So that is the huge benefit to this central control handle that allows me to move the table both right and left and still be right up close to the work. We're getting close, real close. This is 4140, so if I had a heat treating oven, I could heat treat this. You, you could, you could get it probably pretty good just by torching an oil bath um, and stuff like that. I don't have a lot of experience in that uh, area of heat treating, and I don't really think that this thing needs it for the use that I'm gonna put it through anyway. It's not gonna be industrial uh, use, just, uh, you know, home shop kind of Kind of deal. This thing looks amazing. It's absolutely perfect other than the mistakes. So let me get you a little closer look at this thing. I think you'll find it nice and then we will load it up in here and see if it fits and give it a whirl. All right, look at that. Goodness, looks good. Now I didn't finish the back so it wasn't necessary. Just hit it on the scotch bright wheel on the bench grinder. Looking pretty good. Got a good finish. I think that's going to work just fine. But do you see where I made a mistake? I did not get my slitting saw on center. I must have touched off wrong. Or I didn't lock the quill or something. Uh, but it doesn't make any difference. It's just a cosmetic error. You can see the slit is not quite on the center of the hole. It's up a bit. But there's three, there's th three evenly spaced slots, so it's not going to affect the balance or the performance of this thing. It's just a cosmetic error. It happens. It does. So let's load this thing up in that uh, flex shaft grinder. See how she runs. So this die grinder is really not designed to run this flex shaft, but it does, and it, and it runs it well. So take the end and nut off. Slide that in. Is it going to fit? Oh, it does. It's nice. Check its fit in the front taper. Yeah, it's excellent. All right, let's put it together. Load a burr in it and, uh, I don't know, try it out, shall we? Slides right in. Yeah. Tighten this thing up. In through there, my wrench. There we go. Let's let's get a look and see just visually how this thing runs. Do we got a lot of run out or not? See how we did. Zero this guy, and I'll spin it. Oh wow! Check that out. Basically nothing. Let's see if we're just maybe on a 
just a good spot. Hopefully you can see that indicator. Yeah, you can't beat that, you know. Maybe a thou. All right. Man, eh, nothing wrong with that at all. For, for what we got here, that's excellent, I think. Feels good. Basically, no vibration or anything. I like that. Now, I can use my eighth inch burrs in this tool. So that collet turned out extremely, extremely good. If I had a heat treat oven, I would definitely heat treat it, make it a little more durable. But uh, I think for my needs, it's gonna be just fine. Now, if you would, down in the comments, tell me what you would do differently, the process that you would do different than what you've seen me do on this. I'm always interested to hear people's opinions or you know, people's experience on processes that maybe I'm not quite aware of or maybe I overlook because I work in a shop the majority of the time by myself and it's easy to get tunnel vision and I learn the most from my mistakes and from the advice of others so please don't feel bad about correcting me or saying I did it wrong that does not bother me at all I learn a lot from it tell me what you would do differently than what I did and uh, you know I'd appreciate it I also want to take just a second, and I do in every video. At the end of every video, I make it a point to say thank you to the people who support this channel and keep it going. Because without the people who you know make a donation here and there, or uh, patrons, or uh, just random generosity of, of people, I would not be able to do what I what I do. I love making videos for you guys. I really do. But as most people know, times are tough. And um, it takes a lot of effort to make the videos and hours and hours of editing every week. And it's a lot of extra added on stress that, uh, you know, I just accept every week because I enjoy making the videos for you guys. And I appreciate the people who make it possible for me to do that. So if you want to support the channel, I appreciate it. If you don't want to support the channel, that's fine. If you want to support the channel in a way that's not monetary, click the... Uh, subscribe, not the subscribe button that would help click the thumbs up button if you enjoy the videos that is don't click it if you don't like them share the videos there's a share button put it on your Facebook page share it with a friend that's of like mine that you think would enjoy the videos that would mean just as much to me to see the channel grow and succeed in that way as it would for you to try to support me in some other way so that's it thanks for watching viewers patrons subscribers like I said anybody who's helped me I've I'm in debt to you. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.